Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Marmoset, and we're back with Kerbal Space Program. It's Kerbal Space Program, and this is ScanSat Cub Scan 1. Um, map. Yeah, Kerbin Scan 1. Scanning Kerbin. So, let's go to this. Let's see, we scanned a little bit, and here's the big map. So if I time warp a bit, and then untime warp, Nope, it's a small map. And then at the refresh, you can see a bit more of the track has been uh, filled in. So let's um, close the big map, because this one apparently tracks up a bit. And keeping a vague eye on our fuel, sorry, our electric charge, which I think we're doing fine. Let's uh, scan a bit more of the planet. 45 minutes into our mission. So we're not getting, I would say, very much of the poles scanned right now. The mission, electric charge is fine, is 75%. We don't need that one up just yet. So, alright, let's uh, kill the speed, because what I'm interested in the big map is... Give me a refresh. These markers in some way, shape or form, indicate where the orbit's going to go. Now they're currently lining up with each other, which indicates that we're in sync with the planet. Um, we're going round at vaguely the same rate it's going round, so we're just going over the same patch of Earth, or the same patch of Kerbin, every single time. So, what I want to do is find... Alright, so that is... Prograde. What I want to do spin us about, got plenty of electric charge, and we want to burn in such a direction that we are going to change our inclination. So, to do that, we don't need surface. On this, I would like orbital, thank you very much. So, our eccentricity is nicely low. We have an inclination of 68.7 degrees. So, question is, does this radial direction increase or decrease our inclination? That is increasing our inclination. Right. So let's bring up the big map again and increase our inclination and see if it affects these passing points. So our inclination is currently 68 and a bit. I'd like to bring it up to about 85 or so. Ah, there we go. All right. So you can see suddenly all these things are splurring out or blurring or separating out into lots of different orbital points indicating that, yes, we were going to be flying over the same patch of Kerbin repeatedly. So we were essentially in some kind of synchronous orbit around the planet. So as the planet is rotating, our orbit is going around at such a speed that, say, we go over the KSP, and at every day, 10 a.m., Kerbin time, we go over the KSP. Because we're, we've lined up with it. Our, the amount of time it takes us, so the Kerbin goes around once every six hours, our orbit, every six hours, goes over the same place. So let's increase our inclination up to 85. So we're getting a much flatter track. Because ideally what we want is all of these things spread out over... Spread out over all of it, basically. We want, don't want these gaps. These gaps mean that there'll be territory on the planet that we won't be touching. basically keep doing that until such time as we get to there. Nice. That looks a lot better. Give me a refresh of the scan, please. So we'll get a bit wobbly bit now, because we were burning. Nice. Alright, so we've upped our APO a little bit. Say goodbye to the big map, briefly. 
because um, we were burning out our periaps. I think the best thing to do inclination change is meant to do it over here. Um, so let's bit round. Let's just do a complete orbit. Let's see the planet rotating beneath us. Hopefully we shouldn't end up in eclipse for any extended periods of time. See the uh, those green lines of the deep space network. Yeah, now we're getting a nice good view of the southern pole. And at periapsis. I would like to spend just a little bit of fuel. Not much. Recircularizing our orbit. Not that we necessarily need to for the mission, it's just I am feeling ever so slightly pedantic. There we go. Your eccentricity is now very, very small. Small enough that I don't, uh, it's enough for me to care. And we'll just quickly double check the big map. Oh. So it turns out that inclination is what we're going to be flying over. But it was actually the change, the eccentricity, so the time, the orbital time is what was getting these things right. Okay. Let's refresh the big map. Right. Okay then. Well, in that, with that in mind, let's bring our orbit out to 210 by 210. Overshoot! Well, since we're at this location anyway, and we know that burning one of the radial directions is going to have an effect. So that is increase. Let's bring our eccentricity. Oop, how much fuel have we got? A fair bit. I would like an 80 degree angle of eccentricity. Sorry, inclination. Ready on the button to kill the thrusters. And we'll boop around to one of our perigeo apogees and What I'm going to do is I'm going to check the big map when we get to 80 degrees of inclination. And if I think the number is good enough, I'm going to go, that number is good enough. And I'm not going to fuss about getting us a circular orbit. I notice we have drifted slightly. And we're about out of fuel. Alright. Let's check the big map. I think those are spread out enough. Yeah, I think given the... That's the width of the track, how much we scan. And there aren't any... There's a couple here, but there generally aren't any points between these two things, whereby the gaps between these points, any of the blue ones and any other ones. So I think that one's probably the ascending node, and that's the descending node. So that's when we go up, and that's when we go down. Our wider than our track. Our, so if I are wider than that gap, which is huge. So, contract says 75%, we're up at 23. Let's spin time on a lot, actually. Maybe even more. Ah, okay. We're not below. Uh, okay, so to go really, really fast, we need both that. So we can't do a stupidly fast scan while we're actually with the spacecraft. Let's have a quick look at the big map. Get that to refresh. So I don't know if we're actually ever going to directly fly over the pole. Um. But I can just cook off the last of the fuel, increasing our inclination as much as possible. So we 
they are just that much more likely. You'll start to spread out again. And there we go, there's the end of the fuel. Alright, let me refresh. So there's a few little bits and pieces where we were just trying out that, so every now and then there'll be just like strange bends. Right, why? Well, we changed the spacecraft's orbit. So that's up at 30%. So that one will take care of itself over time, broadly. So we'll leave you off to your business. And we will go back to the Space Center. Okay, let's go back to the Space Center and see what we've got. Uh, all right, so it's dark. Um, let's walk to the next morning. Yay! And refresh that. So we've got a few more bits and pieces done. Contract is about 37% done. So while we're waiting for that, let's have a look at some of these. Haul a Mark 16 parachute between 4,000, above between 4,000 and 10,000 kilometers at that speed range. Um, that sounds like something we should be able to do reasonably easily. Um, open. All right, we want something really small. Parachute test? Yeah, that looks like a Mark 16 parachute. Whole set of engines. Donzin's in charge. Save. Launch. All right then. So, have a parachute? Yes. Kerbin? Yes. Not flying. Resolved. Speed, check. Now we just need the altitude. I think we'll probably slow down pretty quickly when we want to. Let's adjust that down a little bit more. Not much point in going too quick. Nowhere very interesting to go. We've got no science or anything of interest on board this. Alright, and now we're flying too slowly, so we'll kill the engines. It says haul, so we literally just have to make that go green. Bing! Contract. Thank you! And with that in mind, we now... Well, let's have a quick thing. Is there anywhere we want to go? There's the Highlands. Let's point... Nope. Uh, now we're in freefall. Alright, um, put some engine throttle on so we've got some control. You know what? This is just a silly idea. Parachutes! And let's get with the landing. <laughs> the black dot out there, I wonder what that is. Parachutes! And we'll continue with the time warp and it should get back down on the ground. So that was a very quick flight. I didn't actually spend a lot of time. But you know, every little bit counts. Alrighty then. Are we coming down on the runway? Well, the dirt track that qualifies as a runway on this place. Yeah, we are. See, that's the shadow. I think we've got all the experiments we can get from the runaway that just involve being sat on it, so... Boink! Hello! Recover vessel. Yeah, there we go. Didn't earn any science. Got a fair chunk of cash back. You didn't earn any experience points. Ten contracts or more, yes, because you're our only surviving Kerbin who knows how to do any of these things. Uh -huh. Alright then. Very AVIP successfully to her destination. She would like to go into orbit. Well, I don't feel too comfortable about putting people up into orbit just yet. That's quite a high altitude. 
You want me to put a stack decoupler into quite a particular orbit. You see, potentially I could have done that. Well, that's a mission we should be able to do. The question is, oh, we earn 56,000 from doing it? TR2C. Do we already have a TR2C uh, new, please? Decoupling. No, we don't have a TR2C stack decoupler. Which makes me think it's the big one. Um, advanced construction. No, it's a TTR7. Hydraulic detachment manifold. Rockamax brand decoupler. Let's, um, let's take that. <laughs> I'm just curious, the TR2C. I don't know what it is. Stack separator. You want me to take it into orbit and get it into that orbit. Alright. Done. So. First up. We need to name our craft. Uh, well, we need to get a Probodyne Octo down first. Stack sep to space. So, our payload is you. Oh, look at you. There we go. We just need to haul it. Get it into that orbit. So, what we can do is bin you, click open, grab our scan sat. The K, wasn't it, for curb and scan? Curb and scan. Load. Rename. Stack set. Alright, um. Orbital Hall uh, 1 No Hall Stack Sep Yes, it's got a really powerful name, doesn't it? It's clearly a mission you want to be involved in with this, isn't it? Um, so we need a orbit, circular orbit with that altitude so we can just go straight up so that's our payload you sit on top of there so we can go with the speed the with the spin of the planet this time uh, we're gonna keep our communitron actually let's double check that our little box you have an antenna range of 3,000 kilometers above the surface so we do not need that so we can save ourselves a well throw ourselves 300 on quid um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the stack up, I'm going to get to that, and then what we're going to do is we are going to see if we can't get information from high out of the atmosphere. Now, because we're hauling an awful lot less mass, because we're not carrying the 0.3 of a ton of this, let's grab that one, put you on there, and we're going to see what kind of high, how high we can get. So we're going to get our proper altitude, and then we're going to go, yes, we've got a proper altitude. And then we're going to see how high we can go um, with this unit. Because remember, we burnt an awful lot of speed last time, um, delta V, just changing the inclination of that orbit. So I'm pretty sure we can achieve that altitude. You are cleared for launch. And... I will start this launch and then probably cut this episode in two. Alright. Hmm. Ah, we need to do it. Just, just drop that a little bit. Um. Um. No, recover vessel. Done. Do we want to. No, so we've got part count. So what we can do. No, we got. I want to get this thing high. I want to get a high, high readings, which means I'm not necessarily too interested in getting them back, but I really want high, 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 and high. So I want a bit more gumph. So I am going to decouplers, radial, give me two. Q 
take you down there. Engines. A pair of hammers. Thank you. Alright, so. No, we've apparently got many, many more engines than I might want there. Glad I noticed that, otherwise it would have just blown up on the pad. So now we've got 6,000 Delta V, because these things fire like crazy. Then we bin them, then we fire the main engine. Then we've got... Uh, right. I don't actually want to ever fire you. Because you're the payload. <laughs> you, you, you stay up there, up at the very top of the spacecraft. You're that engine. You're that engine. Alright, so this should mean we should be able to get a bit further up. Oh, here's the other thing. Um, we noticed that we had not a lot of authority when we were trying to maneuver our spacecraft. You're a payload box. There's a stack of covers. You're a box. We have no command and control options. I don't really want to put two of these on. Alright, fine. Save. So, and launch. So, next episode will be the launch of this ho Orbital Hall Stack Set mission. I need to work on my naming schemes. Either way, thank you very much for watching. I have been the Marmoset. You have been the audience. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.